uh, you know, in effect, Microsoft uh, has a very strong say, if not um, directly controls uh, OpenAI at this point. You know, look, first of all, I have a lot of respect for Elon and all that he does. I would just say that's factually not correct. I mean, the, as I said, OpenAI is very grounded in their mission of being controlled by a nonprofit board. We have a right. non-controlling interest in it. We have a great commercial partnership in it. And quite honestly, I am very comfortable in partnering with a capped profit company that has a mission of fundamentally pursuing this very powerful technology that ultimately is right. going to be controlled by a nonprofit. In fact, the last time I checked, we are the only for profit company that is comfortable with a nonprofit company and a board controlling technology. And I would welcome others to do that as well. A lot of AI right. is already there at scale, right? Every news feed every sort of social media feed, uh, search as we know of it before right. chat plus search, they're all on AI and if anything, they're black boxes. Right. Uh, they're more, I'd describe them as the autopilot era. So in an interesting way, we're moving from the autopilot era of AI to co-pilot era of AI. So right. if anything, I feel, yes, it's moving fast, but moving fast in the right direction. Uh, moving fast where humans are more in control. More, first of all, humans are in the loop versus being right. out of the loop. It's a design choice, which at least we have made. So I feel that it's more important for us to capitalize on this technology and its promise of around human agency and economic productivity. The first things, like we've done with cyber and other places, it would be good for companies, we don't have to wait for regulation, right. for all to have either standards or adopt the NIST standard uh, and use that as, I'll call it, the start of any self-regulation. Right. Then on top of that, if you talk about regulation, maybe we can unpack it from the application domain, right? Because after all, context in which something is being applied, right? Or it's right. being applied in education, it's being applied in healthcare, or it's being applied in retail. So I think we can have the regulatory frameworks that already exist in all these, whether it's consumer safety or financial regulations or what have you. We can have the current regs right. just hold AI accountable like they hold everything else accountable. So this is where I think a little bit my approach at least would be regulators know what they're doing. They've, you know, and in some sense that's the fact that we are having this dialogue, right? right? You know, we were all, a couple of us were at the White House a few weeks ago and having a dialogue. Uh, OSTP, uh, Arthi Prabhakar right. and Gina Raimondo and, you know, the vice president and all convened folks to have a dialogue. And I'm sure they're having dialogue with many other right. uh, teams as well. Uh, that's great. And so to me, I don't think it's just a question of some, you know, technology knowledge. It's just a question of, hey, how do we make sure that this stuff gets deployed so that really the benefits right. of this are protected? No doubt that so far we've seen how these technologies really thrive on huge data sets, huge amounts of compute power, and that certain larger firms may have an advantage. What we need to do as law enforcers is ensure that the types of opportunities and openings for competition that these moments of technology technological disruption can present, that those moments are not being squashed out uh, by the incumbents. You know, it, it's a much more dynamic world. I mean, OpenAI is a startup, a couple of hundred people, inflection, small startup, 